Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again with a quick review. In today's video, I'd like to try and help you better understand the differences between crash detection and obstacle avoidance. Because I know those two terms get thrown around an awful lot and they sound pretty similar, so it can certainly get confusing. But there's a dramatic difference between those two technologies in the way a drone will react to an object in its path when it's flying through the air. So let's start with crash detection, because that's the simpler of the two, and that's been around for quite some time. You'll find it on a lot of drones nowadays. I have a Mini 3 Pro over here. It's got crash detection built into it. Crash detection basically looks in front of the drone digitally, so either through an optical sensor or infrared sensors, and all it's doing is looking for a solid object in the path of the drone. So it's almost like a co-pilot, a digital co-pilot, that's sitting in the drone next to you with its foot on the brake. And if you're not paying attention and you start heading for a tree or a wall, it's going to see the wall digitally and it's going to slam on those brakes so you don't crash into it. So it's a wonderful technology. Now initially, it was only forward looking because that's where you're flying. But companies have since added it to the rear, to the top, to the bottom, to the sides. So you can actually find drones nowadays that have a 360 degree crash detection built in, which is like having this digital bubble around the drone that you can fly through these woods and know you're not going to crash into anything. And I think that's amazing. But the basic function is just to break, is just to stop so you don't hit the tree. Now, obstacle avoidance is, is a magical technology. It's, it's so much smarter than crash detection. So obstacle avoidance is essentially doing the opposite of what crash detection is doing. Obstacle avoidance is not looking for solid objects, even though it's aware of them. It's looking for the holes between those solid objects. So it's constantly mapping out an area, looking for holes that the drone can fit through. So if you're goofy and you fly into these woods with all the brambles and branches, the obstacle avoidance is gonna already know what path it can make through those trees. So again, it's like a co-pilot, but the change this time is it doesn't have its foot on the brake, it's got its hands on the steering wheel. So when you're flying through the woods, the drone's gonna take over if you're about to do something goofy and avoid the tree and find a path through all those solid objects. So it's a brilliant technology that has only started to be introduced into a lot of newer projects. Now, DJI's had it for years, Skydio certainly got it, a lot of companies have built it in. But the big difference with obstacle avoidance is that it's not only based on the sensors, but it's mostly based on the engineering behind the sensors, namely the software and the artificial intelligence that can process all that information incredibly quickly. Because think about it, if I ran into these woods right now, I would run into a tree because my brain can't process all the solid objects in the holes. If you're a good, I guess, fullback and you're playing football, you can find the holes in the line of scrimmage, but for me running through these woods, I'm gonna smack into a tree. The drone won't. The drone is brilliant enough to anticipate those holes and know this hole matches with that hole, matches with that hole, and it's gonna adjust the flight pattern of the drone to find those holes, which again is absolutely amazing. So the reason that's cool is because if you're flying in an area like this, you don't have to worry about crashing into anything. I can basically send the drone into these woods and just put forward on the joystick and have it fly right at the trees and it's gonna find a way through the woods. So what I'd like to do is show you the two so you get an idea of the differences between them. But both of those technologies are incredibly good for any drone you're flying. So you wanna make sure any drone you're considering at least has crash detection in it so you don't run into a tree, which is nice. But you want to see if you can find a drone that's also got obstacle avoidance built into it, like the Mini 3 Pro, the Air 2S, uh, a lot of other drones have it built in, a lot of the Mavic products, a lot of the uh, other products from other companies have it as well. Autel's got a bunch, and I mentioned Skydio before. Now, just to give them a little plug, Skydio has a different type of sensing mechanism, which is even more sophisticated than most drones on the market today. So most drones use what are called stereoscopic sensors. So they've got two cameras, just like our eyes, that can give us a perception of depth to know where things are. Skydio's got actually trinocular vision. So they've got, they've got two cameras and a camera on top, which gives them a much more definitive view of what's in front of it. The depth perception is better the ability to draw a wireframe around solid objects is better, so it's a much more sophisticated drone from an avoidance perspective. And in some cases, in my opinion, it's a little bit too conservative. So when you're flying a Skydio product, I find anyway that that co-pilot is really a pain in the neck because I want to go here and it's telling me you can't go here because there's not enough room to get between these two trees where I can clearly see I've got enough clearance. So the bubble they draw around that drone I think is too big. Something like the Mini 3 Pro, they've got that dialed in with their binocular vision to fly through the smallest gaps that I swear that drone would not fit through if I tried to fly it through. So I'm gonna show you both of those. Now what I'll do first is turn on 
crash detection. So you can see how it flies up to the train stops, which again is a great protection mechanism. And then I'll turn on optical avoidance and do the same thing and you'll see how it'll dodge the tree. And then I'll also fly it through a really complicated area over here with a ton of trees. And I'll show you how it's gonna shuck and jive all the way through those trees to go as deep as I want into the woods without crashing into something. So stay tuned for that next. Then I'll come back with some final thoughts at the end. In this first example, I have crash detection turned on and I'm heading for a tree and the drum will break before it actually hits that tree. Now you'll notice it's moving very slowly and that's because the Mini 3 Pro's detection range is about 75 feet, so it actually saw the tree before it even started flying. In this next example, I have obstacle avoidance turned on and you'll notice when it starts flying that the drone's moving a lot faster and that's because it's already drawn a wireframe of all the objects in front of it and it knows where the holes are, so watch it dodge that tree to the left, watch this branch coming up it's gonna go up and over that branch. Now watch when I pull back in the joystick. It's avoiding objects on the way out as well. It's absolutely amazing. This next example is a little bit longer of a flight and I tried to find an area in the woods that didn't have a lot of bushes and brambles. I wanted to see how the drone would do navigating through old growth trees. And you can see it's dodging all the trunks, pretty straightforward, and I'm doing nothing to control the drone. All I'm doing is pushing forward on the joystick and it's self-navigating through that environment. Now watch this last bit here. It's going to clear these two trees, and it sees the tree in front of it. It's going to jog to the left, and then drop down to avoid that branch. This last example, I tried to fake it out. I'm flying along pretty quick, and I jog to the right, and it has to redraw the wireframe map in front of it, so it's going to stop for a second, adjust its position, slide to the right, and then fly forward. Now it's redrawn the map as it flies. It's going to head into some very complex environments up ahead here. So watch this. It goes over the bush, it's coming up for more debris on either side of it. This is gonna get really interesting. It drops below that branch, and then it stops a little bit further in. Now watch this, this is the best part of the video. All I'm doing is pulling back on the joystick, and the drone is navigating in reverse through that same complex environment. Watch it dodge the tree. Look how close it came to that tree. This to me is absolutely amazing that it remembers where it came from, it's looking behind it with the sensors, and it's able to navigate this incredibly complex environment without running into anything. It's incredible technology. I hope that demonstration was helpful. And again, if you're looking for a drone today, make sure your drone has some type of crash detection built in. Better yet, if you can find a drone with obstacle avoidance, because that's the really sophisticated technology that allows you to fly through an area like this without crashing into something, but still continue to fly through the area. And I can't tell you how impressed I am with obstacle avoidance. I think about that technology a lot, and that's technology that it's almost like it came from a Martian program or something out of NASA because it's so far ahead of where it should be today. I'm blown away by the fact that they can fit it into a drone that's big, but even more impressive, they can fit it into a Mini 3 Pro, which weighs less than 250 grams. So my mind is blown when I look at this level of technology because I'm telling you, from an engineering perspective, it shouldn't exist today. And it does, and it works great. So I'm just really, really thrilled with the way that product performs. Anyway, that's all I really had for today. So I hope you enjoyed the clip. I really love talking about technology and drones and all kinds of other nerdy stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed things. Until next time, have a great day and stay nerdy. Mm -hmm.